All right, here we go, everybody. Welcome back. This is my second round here at Fantasy Life. Make sure you're following us up there. MBFantasyLife.com, of course, all the superstars. Dwayne The Rock, Ian Friedman, and all the ladies and gentlemen there. I'm your host for today, Big Johnny Stud. You follow me up at John Legaza on the Bird app. Um, today, we are going to try... Something a little new for me. We're going to be doing a real sports fantasy draft. This $300 draft you've been seeing Ian and Dwayne do, Dwayne and I did. I, you know, I got to tell you, man, you really got to check out um, the draft that I did with Dwayne. Not just to support the work, but there's so much agreeing that goes on in the space in general. He and I disagreed like crazy, which is actually funny because I li listened to all of his stuff, obviously. If you're, if you're not following Dwayne, I can think of at least one thing you're doing wrong. Not following Ian would be a second. But just where it was, we really didn't have a great, we really didn't have a great run out. You know, it's uh, PPR, not standard because it's a dual flex, but it's only two wide outs. So I kind of almost think of that in the same light. He warned me we might see some boomer style drafting. We're running backs going early. Let me just, speaking of which, let me just double check. I do have the draft board queued up. Look at me. Come on, swing. Yo, holla at you, boy. I'm getting pretty good at this stuff. The one-man band, they call me, you know, not, not for nothing. I'm going to try and carry this stream all by myself. Looks like 20 rounds of the big man. Not too many people can do it, though. I think I'm up to the challenge. I try not to self-promote too much, but if you're into baseball, we're still doing that. Seven days a week. So, without any further ado, this bad boy is about to get going. Uh, this is, I'm going to call this Operation, you know, not, don't face plant. <laughs> That's my, that is my goal, kind of using sites that I'm not really used to while I'm trying to stream on a program that I'm not really used to. This is going to be really good. So, I'm going to do my absolute very best, a lot of fun, you know, to kind of talk through this stuff. It'd be nice to know, nice if I knew what. What pick, I, what pick I had? I'm not even sure. Okay, I have the 10. All right, so we're a little consolidated. I had the 12 last time it killed me. CD Lamb, they settled that, thank goodness. He's ready to go, man. Shame on the NFLPA lawyers because such a great product. We shouldn't be arguing over paying the talent, right? Get these guys paid. When they're healthy, get them on the field. So it goes Lamb, then Brees Hall, my boy, for the Jets. Definitely has an argument to be the 101. I'm not really telling people to be afraid of McCaffrey. I try not to overreact to um, preseason stuff too much. Then it goes Bijan right. There's that boomerisms that I was uh, talking about. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Uh, this is part of the production stuff I was a little bit worried about. Was being able to see the entire board and like, what if I if I zoom in or out on whatever if it'll show up on my screen? I was trying to test this stuff. Okay, I think I got it this time. A little bit of dead space. Maybe I could be. Sometimes I get myself in trouble trying to shoot for perfection. Okay, I think that's. I think that's pretty good. I think we'll roll with that. I got all twenty spots. I got all twelve rounds because I have to make this as simple on myself as possible. I'm really sh shooting from the hip here. Again, this is um, Operation Draft Good Players. I'm also hoping I get some kind of alert in my ear. That's why I get the headpiece in to let me know. So Bijan, Christian McCaffrey, you know those big guys went early like maybe we anticipated. Tariq Hill, Amon Ra, Justin Jefferson, are we worried about? Jefferson yet trying not to be we're up next but man it looks like the board didn't shrink on the video the way I wanted to oh that websites might be linked I think that's what happened okay so the sites are linked meaning I was shrinking my own and the other one I was dragging it down with me a little bit of live tv there for you so the first round kind of going as expected I'm just getting my feet underneath me three kill Amon Ra Justin Jefferson I'm on the clock 
next. Okay, you know what? I'm a little blind. You can see I have the glasses on. And since I have the tint down, I try and blow it up so I can actually read so you don't have to look at me squinting. Although, I guess with the shrunk down, you can't really see that. So we'll do the very best we can here as always. I'm up next. Oh, Saquon, AJB, John Taylor. You know, I really want to keep the clock. I'm not in love with this display. All right, my ear did not ring. Of course, of course. Okay, we're on the clock. I'm just going to, like I said, team, team good players. I'm picking AJB. At the top, kind of my guy, right? We have a chance for the, you know, the number one receiving position. Where I'd been, I was kind of expecting Garrett Wilson, though you know you can never really expect too, too much. Because if you sink your teeth in, right, the predetermined picks, that's really just a great way to get. into trouble, you know, you want to kind of be flexible and keep those options open, something I'm going to be looking to do. You know, I was thinking about a running back early, so I didn't get, so I didn't get swallowed up in the boomerisms, but again, really hard to turn down those top flight wideouts with the three backs off the board. And again, not to be beating the B word into the ground, but Josh Jacobs at 11 overall is not something I've really been used to with best ball brain going on. You know, I've hand built quite literally hundreds of teams at this point and you get so into the, you know, ADP consists ADP and all that stuff. Then Gibbs goes at the turn. So part of me says, Oh man, wide receiver value, wide receiver value. The draft that I did with Dwayne, one of the spots, maybe that I was just a little unhappy with was, the running back stuff, man, this is telling me that, man, my headphones are on. I just double-checked that. So I'm going to go for the game break, right? We're playing for 500 k I'm going for it all. Give me my dude A-chain, you know. Again, I'm not going to mince words here. I'm not going to pretend to be doing anything other than trying to win the entire thing. A lot of times when you play – in contests that have overall elements. Again, you know, hat tip to the people at Real Sports and it's rtsports.com. Excuse me. Um, big chunks of the buy ins go towards the overall. Sorry, I like senior moment it on you right there. There's so much going on while my two picks are in the bag. I'm trying to work on a little bit of production, make sure I can balance it. So I have my eyeball on. I think the graphic is good. Like I said, the lesson I learned was not to be shrinking stuff. I mean, it says I have. Says I have the volume on. Oh, I think I just got it. Oh, okay. I think we might be cooking with Crisco now. I really want you. Know, I want to know when it's my pick. Okay, so now let's see if we can settle in with me, your host. Who am I? The girl, Demi Sugar. Make sure you follow the betting newsletter. You know, Barry had to throw our guy, Mr. MB himself the namesake, right? But being part of this company that just has such a great forward trajectory with so many positive pieces is a real one plus one equals three element going on here that I'm hoping to be a part of. And I'm expressing that through the newsletter, Monday through Friday. You know, I overlap baseball, right? Mr. MLB moving averages, in case you didn't know, now you know. Also a big football guy, right? So I'm going to start to get away from baseball more into football. But if you're strictly NFL, we got you. There's a futures bet up every single day, you know, that I'm on. I mean, doing futures, plus we track everything. The MLB props are doing very good, but what I was getting at, we're going to begin to kind of phase those out.
fantasy life always moving forward, moving the needle, sealed the deal with True Media, who I happen to have worked with in the past. So you get a lot of really cool charts that you wouldn't get anywhere else. And the point of that is keeping the newsletter to being a very quick read. In case you couldn't tell, I talk entirely too much. And I try not to write that way. But the chart, you know, says it all. So we can do a little spoiler here. He hasn't popped up yet. His name will. I doubt will make it all the way back to me. It would be DK Metcalf. I was doing a little scoring regression work. And DK actually leads the entire league in end zone targets across two years by like, like 20 something percent. I mean, really unbelievable. And he ran so cold that it kind of dragged down the output of his season. But the point being, it's really about use, usage and physical tools at that point. So he's still a beast. Gino is still good, if not good enough, you know. If Metcalf gets those kind of looks in the end zone, not only will he go over his six and a half touchdown prop for the season, which again, I think he's gone over each of the last three years, but he also is a pretty strong crack to lead the NFL in receiving touchdowns. Where I got a sniff of that also. You can get like 30 to 1 on that bad boy. Metcalf, just in general, I think one of the forgotten wideouts. I have him at the very, he's the very last of my true number ones, but I do view him in that light. So let's get back into the board in case there's any audio people walking the dog or something. A ton more running backs than I'm used to. And I'm already glad that I have a chan I'm not going to touch another running back for who knows? Who knows? We're going to fill all the other bins. Remember, this is a redraft league. So I have to keep telling myself that one to, again, shake the best ball rot. But it means don't double up on the QBs. But to me, it also means get a great one. It means don't double up on tight ends, but it means get a great one. For me, the answer to these tests, regardless of how people treat running backs, the only reaction I'm going to have to early RBs is to get one early so I'm still in line with paying market price for a player with the big top end, Okay, which there's no argument for HN, you know, his explosivity. But Jonathan Taylor, Saquon, who I'm not drafting, you get a lot of that with me, which is part of the disagreements I mentioned with Dwayne. Not that I disagree with his work or – I mean, he's the GOAT. I was deferring like a mofo to him, right? He's the man. I also, I walk alone. All my streaming is alone. I play so much alone that I have to be careful of not creating my own echo chamber up here, you know? All the voices going on saying the same thing. So point to the digesting of, you know, the shift into... Redraft. So for me, it's singular focus on the onesie positions, right? So again, the, the answer to these tests is hero RB. You get the one running back at the new fair market value that has a chance to blow the top side. Then after that, listen, you you gotta you're playing for it all, and you gotta know running back is a you know position of attrition. Poet didn't even know it. These guys go down like crazy. I'm not over-investing into it. I'm not going to be over-levered, especially, again, if you're listening to this, you've probably heard Dwayne and Ian not say repeated ad nauseum because it's the most important thing is bear repeating over and over. It's how they stick, you know, even for me to test that door, right? The hard head. Targets are earned via talent, okay? And running back points are acquired via role. Not say anyone can get the role. We've seen guys face plant, but you show me 25 touches, I'll show you a guy I have no problem starting. For pass catchers, it just doesn't work that way, right? 1v1 replacement. So a little bit of theory for you. But again, tons of running backs. Barkley, Karen Williams, ATN, Cook, Henry, Pacheco, all went where maybe we threw the third. So I'm glad I have H in. But now what, is, what does that also do? Is it leave some room open on the back end for me? Okay, now this is the hard part because I have picks 
coming up. I want to make sure that I'm, you know, entertaining, but also very smart. I see three guys at least that I love, 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 love. I'm two picks away, so I'm getting one of them. It's DJ Moore, Devonta Smith, Jalen Waddle. Take them, however. I would pick Waddle first if I really had a choice, but – I mean, I have a choice, but I'm a little worried about the non-contact stuff. I'm not trying to invite any injuries right now. Again, playing for an overall and not best ball. I, we need the, the immediate view, right? I think people undersell the importance of winning early in fantasy, getting points up front. All right, so you, you'll see how I handle running back. We're going to make sure that we still have – we get some today points, right, some week one points, but I'm pretty much making sure I'm filling all the other bins first. This player is taking all their time, which, again, is something I'm not used to coming from best ball, which I like, quick, quick, quick reactions. It probably is the best practice. Plus, mock drafts are stupid. Put some skin in the game. Not to speak for anybody's money or wallet, but there are always some low price points. Uh, Dwayne, I'm looking at you, man, but Malik Niebuhr's did go. So we. It's more Devonta Smith. I think I'm going to lean into the more established offense with Devonta Smith, right? Already playing with Hurts, not needing to rely on our rookie quarterback. But again, I think we'll be great. I really like Kel Keller Williams. I'm drafting him. I can't say I've had a ton of the surrounding pieces. I'm not crazy about Keenan Allen. Dunes, it goes a little bit early for me. You know, so I love the more pick. But the rest of the bands, again, not, I'm not trying to get away from them. Just when we're at the top, you know, you're picking nits, right? So you got to split hairs, and I think that's okay. You know, now the fourth round gets interesting. Again, best ball brain is telling me, you know, lock up the, lock up the tight end, right? Lock up, lock up Trey McBride. He's the only guy you're going to need. He's my number one. He's not coming back. Right now, that's where I'm leaning. I don't know if that's going so far against the grain here. I forget. Dwayne was explaining to me that it's not really – this isn't sorted by, like, ADP. It's sorted by, like, last year's points and stuff. So, now, again, that's going to work a lot of times for tight ends. We're looking for repetition. But it's not the biggest sample of players. I did mess some, mention muscle memory before, and I don't want to be a slave to that. But, again, I really think it's important to fill the onesies with the lockdown player you think can be number one, right? You're looking for guys that can be number one at their position. But, man, I got to be honest. The fact that I went – I'm just realizing I went Brown and Smith and paired them. I don't want to say accidentally because if I get Hurts, I'm going to make it sound like I stacked the Eagles on – purpose. But if I don't get him, I'm going to say it was an accident. So now I'm glad I kind of vocalized my own, not say mistake, but my own actions. I'm going jail. Oh, Wang, I actually got a ring. Yay! So I know I'm up. Um, Man, I'm really cruising right now. I might have a few more of these drafts if you guys like this stuff. So for me, it's a no-brainer here. And I'm going jail and hurts, even though I was talking about McBride. I'm going to hope that I'm not as big on some of the other tight ends maybe as other people, Laporta, Kelsey, already gone, Andrews already gone. I'm not tremendous on Andrews, to be honest. I'm worried about the health and stuff. Plus, I don't know. I don't know. The market off, it's disappointed me a touch. I feel like likely might be nipping at his heels. I've just had some concerns about the overall environment. Then again, the health. Andrews just always seems to be missing games all the time. I'm looking for ascendance. And while I know when I fade a player like Andrews, there's a chance that I get smoked at, you know, he's got the top end for a tight end that we look for, right? You can get eight, nine, 10 catches volume. We can get between 80 and 100 yards, you know, depth, right? And get in the end zone. But at the price, I prefer McBride. There's no chance he makes it all the way back. I, I don't even, I don't even like to focus on that stuff yet because I think it just it serves to upset you. Meaning, when you're so far away, to try and start, you know, 
queuing guys, and then, and then oh, I got sniped, you know. So let's take a look at the board, do a little recap. Again, I went hurt, so just hurts to Allen off the board. Redraft, I think you can expect quarterbacks to fall a little bit. But I don't want them to fall too far. I want guys that run. I want the weekly floor with a pop at the top overall. We know we're getting that with Jalen Hurts. I, I don't care about regressing, you know, butt touchdowns. Like, it doesn't mean anything to me. To me, it's inputs. It's a fantastic environment with adults calling the plays and a great offensive line, several years of continuity with the top pieces. And though I'm not a big Barkley guy, it's more of the price. I worry about passes to the running back and his own touchdown equity. Look at that, man, feather in the cap. Coming at you, baby. But again, just picking this, I think, you know, Hurts has a great case, right? He runs, he throws. I think we've seen improvement across the board also. And for me, it's really just a matter of health. So I wasn't really planning on going into the fourth for quarterback. I was thinking, again, tight end fourth. Quarterback fifth and sixth, I was going to play that by ear. So I'll deal with that when, you know, I'll cross that bridge when it gets there. I guess Kincaid is a needle mover. It is McBride. Kittle's. Roller coaster really kind of kills me in redraft. I think he's more of a best ball player. Not that you're going to bench him, but you have to eat the zeros. I tend to like Njoku, who is back at practice, and Jake Ferguson, who I think is a potential needle mover. There's a lot of throwing that's going to be going on in Dallas. We're not exactly sure where it's all going to be going. He also was a major red zone target. So tight ends and touchdowns go together like lamb and tuna fish if you if you feel me i figured hey you guys you know you guys are big ian hortz fans right then you you know i could just throw funny movie quotes at you and i won't have to say where they're from so while we're taking a quick breath make sure you're following all of our stuff at mbfantasylife.com the big dog barry's been dropping his rod of dies some notes every day. Fun to see when he jumps in the email. I mean, if not, you're getting Pete Overzet does the fantasy email Monday through Friday, super sharp. He has a, you know, rep for best ball, but he's just generally very, very sharp, ball knower extraordinaire. On the weekends, uh, I think I've seen Ronis. I know for a fact I've seen Ronis. And then it kind of mix. And like I said, you got, I did the weekend fantasy letter. So a pretty cool mix of sharps. And then you get article links and stuff, the water cooler stuff, or really cool. You know, I've kind of taken to it like a duct of water. And again, it's it's all free, man. You know, you're getting that's a lot of cool work for nothing. And then you can even hook up with the FL Plus, the premium side. And then all the great affiliates like RT Sports. So hat tip to everybody for helping me, you know, realize the dream. All right. Teamwork, make the dream work, everybody. Let's get back to the board here. Running backs kind of settle down. So you see where if you have a back end pick, and I think this is applicable theory here. If you have a back end pick and you have a sense of early RBs, take them in the second, you'll get your guy in the third. And to do you one better, a guy like Moore that I auto smash and best ball in third, I could have gotten in the fourth. Had I gone with Jalen Waddle rather than Devonta Smith, that would have opened the door to either go with DJ Moore or to go with McBride. Now we're at the turn, and I'm like crossing my fingers that somehow McBride would have fallen. That would be my dream team. I'm not expecting it. But, hey, you never know. So I'm getting the running back push tend to felt, felt full off. So while I did pay a bit more of a premium on A-Chain than I wanted to, it ends up kind of manifesting in discounts a bit later on. So knowing the room can be really helpful. Now, the player in, at the under the gun at number one went Lamb, which, again, perfectly, perfectly cromulent 101. Then goes Laporta Kelsey. At the 2-3 turn, this is not a tight end premium league as far as I know. 
Well, I can't go dig around for rules. I'm pretty sure my man Dwayne would have let me know that. So I just don't think it's worth the opportunity to cost. And if you're trying to, like, choke the room, I don't know. I don't really get it. He did come back and go with Patty Mahomes to complete that, though. Uh, Dwayne, this is one of Dwayne and I's sticking points. Uh, last weekend, we ended up with Kelsey, who I'm not drafting at all. I think they're not going to be looking to force his usage during the regular season. I think Rashi Rice now looks like he's going to play every game. They added Xavier Worthy, and there's just a chance Kelsey's black, you know, just black. Like a good player, but black. There goes McBride, fourth pick in the fifth, which to me is just like Super Smash Brothers right there. Starting to get a nice mix of onesie positions. Kincaid is gone. Andrew's gone. McBride is gone. Like I said, at the TE spot. So it's like Kittle. I would go Pitts. After Pitts, I think I got to wait. It's a little early for Njoku. Again, remember, no ADP here because he had great season, one of the reasons we love him. And I may take him on this wrap. Again, I think he's one of the guys that can move the needle, but, 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 big shaking butt on this one. The quarterback situation in Cleveland is really starting to terrify me. I was Really big on Deshaun Watson early on in best ball season as a QB3 because he was going so late. And you're thinking about the potential of topside with the rushing floor. Man, I have completely pulled the eject button. What do you push eject buttons? Whatever you do to eject buttons, I'm doing it. So I'm going to go Kittle if he lasts. And if not, um, Pitts, excuse me, if he lasts. And if not... I'm going to pivot. There's still a couple of smash wideouts here. Amari Cooper with carrying the same Browns problem. We've seen him succeed with very little, though. Chris Godwin, who I love. Terry McLaurin, who I love. Tank Dell, who I mean, me and Dwayne and I drafted. Again, I'm not, I'm not drafting Tank Dell. I'm worried. Like, I believe Nico Collins is the guy, and I think after that, you're going to get valleys in the production which is fine in something like best ball, but I think in redraft, you're going to be frustrated. So Tank Dell just went again. I don't, and that's, I don't get it, but I don't really get it. But you see Ramondre Stevenson went, he really shouldn't be a fifth round pick. So that's part of that give and take where, you know, pay up for at least one running back early in these formats. I'm sure we'll end up with another player we don't really want, but such is life in the big city. Again, if you get some week one production, we'll just fill it in. We're going to be working the wire. We're going to be speculating. We're also, because this league has kickers and defense, we're not going to draft them. We're going to do that before week zero. Who cares? You know, we're going to look to speculate on an injury before this week. Or We're on the clock again, and we're getting monster production at the wide receiver spot. So just to make sure, guys, that I like Hopkins, Watson, Brown, Sutton, Thomas, Atunze. Yeah, okay. I think I'm pretty settled in on Chris God when he rang and then he is this um I do write at the athletic also I didn't want to cross promote too much. But if you're following all my work, my um data backed wide receiver article, super nerdy stuff, combining all the weird advanced statistics. Popped up Godwin in a few spots at cost. Again, if he's going to be back in that really like true slot role where he can dominate PPR scam style, also get some stuff out wide. But I think we're going to also look to McMillan at the back. I'm always kind of thinking back in in case something goes wrong. Godwin maybe gets old really quick, though. I think, I don't want to put the horns on it, but I think I believe in Baker Mayfield, you know, just be good, right? It doesn't have to be great. Just got to be good. They have the tools. If anything, I'd be buying that Evans is the overpriced one. So I now I'm looking at the wide receiver that I said I was going to, the tight end I said I was going to take before that I didn't. So that's twice I lied to you, man. Sorry about that. Under the gun, I just saw Godwin. I didn't think I'd be able to get Godwin as a round five pick. Now, James Conner, Aaron Jones starting to go and win. Man, to me, a lot of times they represent the very end of the the running backs that I want. No, 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 it's okay. I'm gonna I'll, next time. I'm gonna hope for like Brian Robinson or Zach Moss, or like a, as a worst case. Well, I'll, I'll be okay with that. So we're on Z clock.
anyway, we're gonna go, we're gonna buy into the Kyle Pitt stuff and look for the breakout with adults in the room in Atlanta. I wouldn't call myself the biggest, you know, kind of pit stand right now. But round six in redraft, right? We know he already has a thousand yard season under his belt, and the injuries were a thing. And it's funny, we crush these guys for being soft if they don't play when they're hurt. But then if they do kind of play through injury and they're not great, we crush them anyway and, you know, ding their future potential, which is you know, even, even worse. So I think Kyle Pitts inarguably, you know, has a top side in Atlanta with Cousins on the fast track. That makes him every bit the weekly projection that Kincaid or Andrews is. Even Kelsey, greater than sign Kelsey. Maybe even Laporta. Uh, seriously, that's how I feel about it. Pitts. Notice the one name I didn't say is McBride. I think, I think McBride's in a class of his own. I think he reminds me of the Travis Kelsey archetype. Right? There's some McFarlandisms. That was going in the back end of the first. But now I feel great already about this team because I'm not going to be scrambling to fill in quarterback and tight end. I may not even take another one. Quarterback is really deep this year. You're not looking to replace hunts. You'll figure something out about buys later on. Right now, for me at least, it's about you know nailing the running back situation. I already mentioned targets being earned greater than sign, running back roles being given. So we're going to address a week one running back probably on the very next pick and then expect the yellow brick road. Again, front audio people, wide receiver, Board slots or whatever are yellow. Stacking target earners. You know, and going from there and letting the rest kind of figure itself out. Uh, I'm not I'm not even sure if I I guess I'm gonna look out for QBs. I'll keep an eye out. Like if, they, if everybody that might get the ball goes, maybe a guy like, you know, Drake May, they said won't start, maybe like he will, so maybe he'll fall. But I think teams that drafted multiple quarterbacks, I don't want to say they're making a mistake. I mean, it's one of the reasons that I want a great QB, so it's there's no wondering who I'm starting a QB. Right now, there's no wondering who I'm starting a tight end, and that's the issue. You get two guys that are close, now you're like streaming and you're comparing and you're doing work, pulling your hair out that you don't need to be doing. So I'm going to look to, again, in these next two picks, Kind of fill in the starting roster with the best running back slash target earner I could find. Unless I think that there are two maybe running backs, maybe one that's worth kind of holding or one. I don't know, I have to look. It's going to depend because they are going, though they kind of slowed up a bit. I Meaning here, let's let's go through some names. Because I didn't want to put the car before the horse because they still have a while to go. I mentioned Brian Robinson. Well, like he's like a, you know, 10 running backs away. But guys, sooner, um, Javonta Williams, I like. I've been getting away from Samir White and worried about the, Ra the Raiders maybe suck and he doesn't play on third downs, which is not a great combination. Maybe Devin Singletary. Again, they gave him the bag. He showed us last year he could play every down. If Daniel Jones pulls back on the running a little bit, you know, maybe he, he even is a touchdown guy. Zach Moss, I think, could be the starting running back for the bank. You know, that's that's kind of sexy. Now, Chase Brown is down on this list because he doesn't have the production. Like, maybe I go tap tap on the Bengals. You know, you roll out Moss week one with Brown in the tank, and like, what's the worst case there? You started the wrong guy. Brown goes nuts in a bell cow roll, and then you have him. 
he's far he might be far enough down to slip, but he could be playing with could be playing with fire. I guess it depends how many backs go between now and then. You know, whenever you're on a far end, that's something you have to concern yourself with. Amari Cooper just went. Amari, um, Calvin Ridley again, who you lie like Hopkins banged up on the wrong side of the age curve. I'm not a big Levis guy, but you know, Ridley for how much everyone loved him last year doesn't seem to be seeing that kind of steam this year. I think he's very you know talented now with the second year again, healthy offseason, building with continuity. Something I'm always paying attention to. There's a pretty good argument for him. So back into the running backs that I actually like. I mentioned Javante Williams, Zach Moss, Tony Pollard, Brian Robinson. So there's definitely a starter here. After that, I think the starters dry up. So I wouldn't be too bold. I wouldn't get too bold and look to skip on running back with each of my next two picks. I'm not going to do that. Interesting. Raheem Mostert goes. That was it. That was the major sticking point. Maybe that's why we avoided my phone calls. <laughs> we were coin flipping my Aaron Jones to his Raheem Mostert. I, I honestly don't think it's close. Maybe that's part of my A-chan love. I worry about the most of health. I think you got all you were going to get. I think that was absolutely selling the top. It went out on top. Even that hurt at the end of last year. So, like, I feel like we're not dinging him for that. Javante Williams goes, who I was hoping for. You know, Aaron Jones, we worry about health also. But, again, it's redraft, baby. So, we saw the Vikings try and force feed Alexander Madison and him not do a darn thing, turn that into Aaron Jones, who we've seen be the engine of a good Packer offense. And we could be talking about, you know, especially with, um, we don't even know, we don't know about Addison. I don't want to get into the off field stuff. Again, just not even just poor decision-making. It's criminal. And they just lost a teammate to drunk driving. We just had two young hockey players pass away with it. I, I don't know. I'm, you're not going to find the sympathy there for me. So if he gets suspended, don't cry for me, Argentina. But with Hawkinson also down, Aaron Jones could be opened up, set up, I mean, for an opening, like, ridiculous passing workload to start the year plus the touchdown equity. I like Ty Chandler, too. I think he's a, he's a great backup. I also think if you're building zero RB, he's a must, right? I'm not trying to knock him down. I just think the plan is Aaron Jones, especially not say they're going to try and hide, hide Sam Darnold, but they're going to try and hide Sam Darnold a little bit, a little bit, you know what I mean? Just, just a little bit. So DeAndre Swift, Devin Singletary at the top of the scoring board, Zach Moss, Tony Pollard, Brian Robinson. I mean, there's, there's plenty of runners left that, to me, it's almost worth looking at Pass catcher is Dove Samuel. Man, I like the Dunze here. I like Brian Thomas here. I don't know if I could pass on those guys. You know, I know I mentioned off the Bears, but maybe I'll go with Thomas because he's probably in line for full workload and all the goodies. Man, it's funny when you play on when you play off site to be scanning through the player stuff because right if you're going by totals and you're completely missing like injured guys and stuff like that or whatever. Jameson Williams is there. That's a big pop too. I like Jameson. Man, but I'm kind of looking at the young guys. I'm going to go. I'm looking at Brian Thomas or Rome Adunze. And me and Dwayne drafted a Dunze also. I wish I knew what round. I'm going to look like a stupid. We might have like drafted in round nine. I hate leaving so much value on the table. But again, we don't know what everyone else is doing here, how they're going about mixing up this player board. So, yeah, I'm. this might be considered um, the best ball brain happening. But Thomas is going so much earlier in best ball that, like, to get him in round seven right now, I, I love it. Man, I'm taking him over a couple of guys. He's probably not going in front of consensus while he's Jaden Reed. Again, I worry about Jaden Reed in three wide receiver sets. Who's getting the who's getting the playing time, man? I got a guaranteed playing time. You know, and I think Thomas is guaranteed playing time in a, you know, 
ascendant offense. Right? I keep using that word, but it's the truth. I think Trevor Lawrence, his story is yet to be written. We saw the best side of him coming back in that playoff game. So maybe I'm just telling myself a story, but I really like Thomas here. Let me not rush. Let me not rush. Let me look at the board right, and see what the running situation is for those other guys. Man, they've got two and three running backs, respectively. They're going to look for wide out. So I'm, I'm going with Thomas here. All right, locked him up. Now I'm definitely taking my best available runner after that. So right now, my team is A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Jalen Hurts stack with Chris Godwin, Brian Thomas to round out the wideout slash flex spot. Devin Achan, the RB1 with Kyle Pitts pulling the tight end, and I'm feeling really good about the balance here. So it's Javante, DeAndre Swift, Tony Pollard went. I'm going to hope that RBs don't go. I don't, I don't think so. Again, I don't understand the play of Team 11. I don't want to drag anybody. The names are not up, but we're keeping everybody incognito. But listen, I got to be me. I got to be me. You know, I, you drafted Josh Allen in the third round. He's your anchor. He's your stud. He's your beast. He's got to carry that team. Why would you turn around and draft Jordan Love in the sixth? Maybe this team is getting autoed right now. Devin Singletary goes. So I won't kill the three running backs, but I don't understand backing up Josh Allen with Jordan Love. You're just never going to get me to understand that. To me, that feels like an objective mistake. I am so careful about, you know, lecturing people, I'm right, you're wrong. I don't do that at all. David Montgomery went. He would have been a nice player. Of course, I worry about Gibbs eating into his stuff. I think I'd rather... I think I'd rather... Um, Zach Moss, Brian Robinson. I know Robinson's splitting with Eckler, but I think there's a possibility that, you know, Moss is the baseline back for a sick Bengals offense. Brown's never really shown it to us. Yes, he's explosive. Yes, we love him. Yes, he pops in the efficiency stuff. To me, it's not wish casting, but it's it's the more risky play. So as I talk about it, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to. I'm really hoping. I hate when you lock in a player and he's one away. I'm going to hope he doesn't go. I'm going to hope Chase Brown makes it back to me. If Moss does go, I'm going to go Brian Robinson. I'm not feeling brave enough to pass for another, you know, whatever twenty five picks for another runner because I don't want to get left out in week one. You know, you want something. Zamir White went. That makes the fifth running back. On Team 12, so now you're benching. You have to bench David Montgomery or Samir White, which, I again, I just don't understand where you think all the pass catchers are going to come from in a two-flex league. So maybe there's some auto pick going on. Maybe there's just somebody smarter than I am. Dwayne was very clear that this is something that we could see happen, the hoarding of running backs. I thought he meant to fill in the starting positions, meaning even the flex. But if you have five, Jalen Warren goes, who again, I really like, but he's already been banged up a little bit. I think there's enough for both of the Steeler RBs to eat. I wouldn't have gone that way because, again, I'm looking for a little bit more immediacy. If he weren't banged up, Warren's a, a fine pick for me. So I'm going to go Zach Morrison again. Just tell myself a story that I have the baseline work and the touchdown equity on a Joe Burrow offense. I'm also going to hope Chase Brown makes it back. But I'm feeling really good about this team. You know, RB2 for many squads, like I would think if you were to poll, by right, exit poll fantasy drafters and ask them, you know, where their worry spot was, honestly, you know, most of them will tell you RB2, right, if it wasn't tight end or QB. So we don't have tight end questions. We don't have QB questions. I'm still deciding if I'm going to even back them up. 
Right? Like if Pitt stinks, I think you go streaming. I mean, 20 rounds, a lot of the players get drafted. But again, 20 rounds, it's kicker and defense. A lot of the teams I noticed are going to draft those where I'm not. So I'm going to lean into, you know, just, again, now it's back to the drawing board. Now it's just best available RB wide receiver. Best available, best available, best available. My starters are theoretically spoken for. So this goes to something that I mentioned at the outset, which is, you know, keeping your options open, something that I think is really important when, you know, you're drafting, especially at the back end. You pigeonhole yourself at the back end of a draft. You end up with players you didn't want or grossly overreaching. I understand the ADP goes out the window to a certain extent. But you want to stay within the you know standard kind of price functions. The player on the board right now doesn't have any onesies. Again, it doesn't mean you can't drop him back. Jake Ferguson just went. I had him on my list of needle movers. You know, I... there's still quarterbacks that we like. You know, Jaden Daniels not gone yet. Love him. He could run. I mean, relying on a rookie is a little bit worrisome. Right, I'd rather have hurts. But you could have waited on that. Again, I would have if I didn't take Hurts. Funny, I'm scanning with my eyes right now, and Kyler Murray is still available. So to me, like, I don't want to say it feels like a mistake, but, man, oh, it's like if you knew that you could have gotten Murray in the eighth, even with the Eagle stack, do you take Hurts? I don't know. be honest, I don't know. Now, again, Playing for the playing for an overall prop, the answer is probably yes. Right, that we're looking for that we had the nut, the nut hand. We had the nut hand. You know, when it was it was hurts all season. When it wasn't Brown, it was Smith. They were just alternating those monster monster games with you know eight chan staying healthy all year, getting his sixteen to eighteen carry games. He's not going to get twenty five. People are nuts, but you get this guy six to eighteen. He could be the one point. You know, a one. Can Chris Godwin working his magic out of the slot? PPR scan that second half production we saw. Kyle Pitts stepped forward, new environment, fast track, possibly bad defense, carnival games. Brian Thomas, all the talent, you know, underpriced here. Stepping into the what we hope is an every down wide receiver two role. So hopefully I built something very strong and I'm going to try and build off of that. Chase Brown went, unfortunately. He didn't make it very far. So there's your hint that people are scanning. Kyler Murray went also. A friend of mine was like, what? With good reason, mind you. So now it's like a get your guy thing. But I'll tell you what, man. You know, you're really glad that you got Zach Moss where I did because Jerome Ford, who I like, but even... I'm not sure of the foreman situation. If the foreman is feeling great, he's probably the end zone guy, which is not a great look to start the season with. But like Chuba Hubbard just went, and I, I get the rookies on pop to start. I don't know. We've seen the Hubbard show. We've also seen the Panthers. Now, granted, granted, new shot callers. However, it's possible there's no saving the lack of height at quarterback. And if they're just not scared of a quarterback, especially when they could sit in the pocket, stand up over the O-line, a guy like Hubbard, which I don't really think of as being crazy explosive, you know, you could see where that one ends poorly, where you're looking to replace him pretty quickly. All right, let me do some digging. So guys that I just love, right, I guess we could start the queue here. I just figured out how to queue. Good for me. So Jameson Williams, big top side here. Cortland Sutton, Target Hog, Rome, Adunze, Pure Beast. You got to like that. Even like Khalil Shakir, Josh Palmer. There's some, there's some target earners that are still left. Then it gets a little bit hairy. Right, then it's a little kind of mad. So I think... Right, I'm feeling we want probably at least one, if not 
two of those players. Pop over to runners. So right now I'm just kind of wholly ignoring the onesies, which, you know, I'm fine with. Again, you have Jalen Hurts. Do you care about any of these guys? I'd like to see what Caleb Williams has or Jaden Daniels has. And that's the route I would have went if we didn't go with Hurts. But since we did, I think you shut the door. Tight ends, Brock, Brock Bowers, Goddard. I mean, what the, like, stack? Again, I guess I could have thought of the super-duper uber stack. But, like, no thanks. The only other guy I'm really interested in, to be a frank, is Taysom Hill. Because there's a chance that, like, he's the Saints starting running back. So now that I say that out loud, that's the one. That's the one tight end I probably consider backing up with. I have a John Smith addiction, so I've been trying to convince myself down that road. Also, quite a few running backs went since my turn. Brian Robinson, Jerome Ford, Chase Brown, Chuba Hubbard, Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler. And Trey Benson, right? We're getting to backup territory here. Guys that I still like. Not much in the week one, uh, Ben. Though I, I think Gus Edwards is a is a week one running back. It ain't pretty, though. I mean, guys like Taji Spears I like. I mean, Zeke Elliott. Now I'm worried that the... Cowboys are just going to split all over the place. Though as a Jet fan, man, I saw Dalvin Cook last year. He was not good. He was not good. So part of me, the part of me that's been drafting Rico Daddle that's now really bitter and sour about the world is like, man, maybe we should lean into that. If Edwards goes, it would probably be Dowdle. Though at that point, I'd probably wait for my second pick. Either way, if Edwards, yeah, if Edwards goes, I'm I'm not gonna take a I might not even take a runner here at all. I may double up on the wideouts. And I like Taji Spears, I like Pollard better. I'm not drifting Dobbins. I'm afraid his leg is gonna fall off. I do like Charbonnet, but I think he's the clear two right here. I like McLaughlin, but I think he's a two, possibly two P. You know, now you're into firm, firm, firm backup territory. So I'm just like praying that Edwards makes it back to me in two picks. If not, you know, again, Dowdle has a chance, right? If he's explosive week one, I don't know what, if anything, you can expect or are going to get from Dalvin Cook. But all the backup to him, like Blake Corm going, Blake Corm, I think, is truly one of the, you know, coveted backup pieces. Just goes to show you what people think about the Charger situation. And I guess people think it's going to be Dobbins out of the gate. Roma Dunze just went. Hmm. And now I'm making myself there. I'm, like, I'm not. It's like I'm going to get to the point where I'm drafting Dobbins. I think I'm just willing to let other people maybe make this decision for me. And where I have, you know, Cortland Sutton as one of the last like, true like alpha target earners. That's the route I'm going to go. Again, it's the it's the talent that earns them. I would have loved to get a Dunze in nine. Round nine or Jameson Williams, they both just just missed them. I'll say it once, I said it a million times that you want to be in the middle this year. This year you want the middle. Show me the like six, seven, eight all day. You end up kind of picking the scraps at full from both directions. And I absolutely love it. I'm starting to feel a little thin as far as runners go. The guy with too many running backs then just took Taji Spears. I like to know he's gonna catch the ball. He's got Nakua and you know Waddle. Uh I got news for you, buddy. Waddle is wearing a non-contact jersey right now. Like, you better get out there. If you're going to start this guy as a, you know, third-round pick. The target earners, again, just not easy to find. There are players that are like, we're going to cover guys that are like, that are a pop. But, listen, Sutton comes out. He's the target earner off the bus. And I think you need to have enough of those. 
you know, now I'm feeling pretty solid about my bench spots where I have a, I have a bench player in Sutton that should be starting for most other teams. The running situation is getting a little bit hairy, just a little bit, just a little bit. You know, I got him a little bit. I'm tossing and turning between Dowdle and Davin, uh, Dowdle and Gus Bus. And see, where I like Gus Bus so much is best ball that I don't think Dobbins last to week three. But what if it is the Dobbins show up to week three? Like, I'm worried about the quality of that offense altogether. Uh, I haven't really had to make this decision in, in redraft. Luke Musgrave just went with Zeke Elliott. So I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to just – I'm going to stick with my offseason guns and hope that Rico Dowdle has shown the Cowboys something. Remember, we've hearing, we're have we going to hear overreactions for everything. People are starved for news. We're starved for football, just about anything at this point. Dalvin Cook was awful. Last year for the Jets. Awful. And he's dealing with recurring shoulder stuff. Just because they signed him doesn't mean he's getting the ball. It doesn't. We've seen this with um Melvin Gordon, right? We've seen this with we've seen this with a bunch of of you know late stage veteran running backs. And it doesn't work out. So I'm I feel very good about my Dowdle pick here. Because it was the pick I was smashing all offseason. And in fact, it's it, it, he's not available if they don't sign Cook. So let's let's draft Cook then, if that's the big deal, right? If we're if we're and the fact is the Dallas offense is, is explosive, right? We want we want to attach a sidecar to that team. We just don't know who it's gonna be. And with the way I feel about Cook, I, I'm, I'm glad I didn't throw away my doubt of love. Now it's yeah, it's it's reaching on backups here. Jordan Mason just went in the tenth. Good luck finding him on the player queue. So maybe I should start like doing a little scanning as I'm BSing over here. Eckler, Trey Benson, John Brooks, Corum, Spears, Elliott, backup work to backup RBs. Very end of the target earning wide receivers, like I mentioned, DeAndre Hopkins just went. Very last of the startable kind of QBs. Maybe startable is the wrong word. I wasn't saying must start or like yes start. Purdy, Caleb Williams, very people filling out the QB spot. And then it's going to come down to those, you know, the ancillary pieces the rest of the way. Where I catch up is when everybody has to fill in tight ends and quarterbacks, you know, for guys that they're going to be going back and forth with. For me, really, like, it sounds crazy because, again, 80, there is no ADP here. Taysom Hill really kind of sticking out. When you hit back 11, you know, the Kendry Miller thing has been a disaster. He's down. Jamal Williams looks like he might be on the wrong side of the age curve. Though he's shown to earn work where he's gone, it's it's not explosive. And lots of people are worried about Kamara, and that's another age thing. We hit those touch loads or whatever. Kamara 29, so not quite at that. Not quite at the 30 yet. He's got tons of touches on the Tigers. Hill again, also, you know, we might be throwing the ball and catch the ball, running routes and in the end zone and stuff. So he just, he does kind of stick out for me if, among, you know, all the backups. Running backs, you know, I, there's still guys I like Charbonnet, McLaughlin. Again, you know, I mentioned Gus Edwards, Jalen Wright, Bucky Irvin, Tyler Algier. You know, you're into the backups here. Braylon Allen, 
you know, guys that, well, not Braylon Allen's case, but I was saying guys that, we're talking about guys that could take a week one job, right? I think that should be next. So I don't think that goes for Charbonnet, McLaughlin, Gibson. I think Gus Edwards, you know, could be week one starter. I think Bucky Irvin, I don't know if he could be a week one starter. I think Bucky Irvin could steal the actual base work which might include touchdown equity from Rashad White, which is why I've been backing away from him. Again, he's been terribly inefficient running the ball. And again, he's a fantastic receiver. But if he's going nowhere side to side and Irvin's getting the three, four yards with the cloud of dust, you could see a flipping there pretty quickly. So, yeah, you know, Charbonnet, McLaughlin, there's a couple guys that I like still. We're still a few picks away. We'll see if the board goes green. That's the running back square. So as far as wide receivers go, you know, it's starting to get a little ugly. Mike Wilson for Arizona, right? You feel, you're already feel like you're starting to reach a little bit. I think I like Jalen Polk for the Patriots. They put Bourne on the pup. So Polk. Could be a, you know, target leader off the bus. Uh, Xavier Leggett, again, just kind of investing in first-round draft capital. Guy like Rashid Shahid. So there's still some love there, not a ton. Just a little bit. You know, you're kind of you're stretching. Sorry if you're looking at me squint in the bottom there. <laughs> the fonts are getting smaller. And Leon's getting larger. So... I need to make sure that doesn't ruin my... Okay, no. I was afraid as I... The same way when I messed with the height, if I started scrolling, I was throwing off the visuals. There goes Algier, Chandler, there's Dobbins. So like Chandler and Algier, really two of the elite, you know, backup options, in my opinion. I think Braylon Allen is one of those. He looks phenomenal. It's just if Brees Allen... If Brees Allen... If Brees Hall goes down, excuse me, Jets fans... How much can you expect a rookie to fill in? I don't know. But you would think if the Jets do kind of fulfill the prophecy and are good on offense, it's going to be a great role to have. So we're three or four away. Taysom floating, but I think I think we want to snatch up a runner. You know, the guys in the end should have been done grabbing runners a while ago that we should be able to pass on them for pass catchers. Again, I cannot believe I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to keep daring these guys to keep taking the running backs because it's round 11 and the players after me each have two wide receivers. Four total wideouts from two teams in round 11, it to me is absolutely nuts especially the way they're running out. So I don't want to see all my guys get plucked. It's just a matter of who we like. I mean, I think it's got to be Shahid. You know, Thomas out of the way. We're finally going to get what we hope is a full complement of snaps. And I think Shahid has erroneously, erroneous on both counts, has been erroneously labeled like a slot guy. It's not the case. He's super explosive and just returned to practice. So I think had he been putting up this big, Gus Edwards goes, Julian McLaughlin goes, had he been putting up this big preseason, he probably would have off the board a while ago. So I'm going to lean into the ifs and buts or candies and nuts a little bit. That was Addison. It was time for him to go. Let's go, Shahid. Add some explosivity. And again, you know, Derek Carr, one of those guys I mentioned before, playing through pain, and we trash this guy. Then he plays hurt, and we trash this guy. If he's healthy on the fast track, they could just be okay again. We're not, you're not going to find the Derek Carr swan song here. You know, me singing, you know, uh, siren songs for this guy, waxing poetic. But, 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 big shake and but. He just might be in a, you know, NFL level QB. In which case, you know, having Chris Olave and Alvin Kamara and Shaheed would be great. 
So I was correct about you know predicting Charbonnet goes to the guy with all the running backs. I so the same guy now has Gibbs, Kamara, Connor Montgomery, Zamir White, Taji Spears, Zeke Elliott, and Zach Charbonnet. Now, yes, I'm bitter because I was going to draft Charbonnet, but you don't have a use for Charbonnet. I don't understand. That's two, four, six, eight running backs in a league where you could start four of them theoretically because there's two starting and then two flex, but just burning, burning four backups. I could even see if you wanted another backup in case you felt you were going to be left holding the bag, but you could have that, brother. You could have that all day, man. I mean, you know, I'm just not going to worry. I, and he didn't even take a white, didn't even take a white out. Crazy stuff, man. Of course, all my guys got yoked. So I'd be down to my guy, Bucky Irving, that I mentioned. I like Marshall and Lloyd, but he's banged up. I don't want to wait and risk re-injury. Ray Davis, I like. Tyrone Tracy. So there's still a couple guys. Even guys I might look at on the next swing. Where, you know, we're just going to look to stack very strong backups. But I think Irving is my guy if he falls Bucky Irving. If not, I guess Antonio Gibson is a pop. I feel like that's we just know what that is already. But, you know, again, these are bench guys that we're not really asking much from. Tracy, Tank Bigsby, Roshan Johnson, just kind of talking out loud, guys that I really like. I know who else I really like. That little piece. It's a berry play, meaning he's buried in the ranks because he didn't play last year, so we don't know where he would go. But if we're talking about backups that look like they have a chance to take the job on an explosive offense, it's Cam Akers. Right? He's been the best back in camp. But just like it's a massive, like, all right, it's a little too soon for that. It's a little too soon to get cute because there's no chance Irving makes it back. I'm going Irving, like I said. With Akers queued up and Taysom Hill queued up, right? Those other guys queued up. That'll be the route that I go if they fall. So, everybody, let's take a quick break from that. Enough of that, more of this. Holler if you hear me. Uh, again, this is my first time meeting a lot of you. Hi, I'm John Legaza, <laughs> Brooklyn, New Yorker. <laughs> Newest member of the you know fantasy life slash betting life family. So follow me at John Legeza, L-A-G-H-E-Z-Z-A. Streamline all my work. I uh, guess I do a ton of baseball, do a ton of football, podcast, projections, the whole nine. And then, again, I mentioned the betting newsletter Monday through Friday. Please sign up for that bad boy. It's free. If it's free, it's for me. We're now an hour and ten minutes into me carrying this bad boy solo. I hope I'm doing a good job. I, feel, I, do, I do a pretty good job filling the airwaves, right? Do a pretty good job filling the airwaves. Hopefully, you know, switching back and forth is not too much for people, but you know, kind of I answer my own questions as I'm as I'm drafting and streaming. I think I'm doing a great job. I mean, I don't know how the stream part's coming out, but I like to draft. So I've got Jalen Hurts, Devin Achan, Zach Moss starting running backs. Dowdle, Bucky, Irving behind them, right? Hoping for something, right? Maybe Irving takes the job. Maybe Dowdle is the bell cow. Obviously, we're not going to get 85%. But if he's a 65% guy and looks explosive on a Dallas offense, that's good. Rico Dowdle is a, is a winning pick, right? A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. So I have that Hurts, Eagle stack. But then also Chris Godwin, Brian Thomas, Cortland Sutton, Rashid Shaheed, right? So a good mix of what I feel is a full complement of playing time in good scenarios, good weather, fast tracks, dome play going on with Kyle Pitts at the tight end. You know, that's the one that worries you, of course. But we know all the tools are there. The prospect pedigree is there. And now we're hoping the environment and the utilization will follow. In which case, getting off the bus, there's no reason Kyle Pitts is not a top six tight end as far as projections go. And that's really all you can ask for right now.
So hit me up on Twitter if you happen to be watching the video. Let me know what you think. You get me any time there. Always looking to meet me, gente. You know, our people that are supporting the work. Again, without you, know, you, there's really no us. Without you, I'm just some kind of fat guy yelling at his computer. So let's take a look at the draft board. Again, I think the thing that really sticks out is some of the extreme strategies that we've seen. You know, the players to the right of me, again, you know, to the the short side, I'm at the 10 picks, I'm meaning 11 and 12. Combining, you know, two QBs in the first six rounds, I don't understand that a one QB league. Then also that same player to two tight ends in the first 10. Now I see the Packers stack developing. Okay. Again, Jordan Love. Romeo Dubs, Luke Musgrave, Dontavian Wicks, and Marshawn Lloyd. Why did you draft Josh Allen? When are you starting Jordan Love? And how are you determining which Packers player to play? Again, you to me, redraft is about clarity. My team, at the very least, it's clarity. We know exactly who we're starting week one. We know exactly who we're like hoping for things from. You know, and for frankly, I'm I'm in love with this team already. It's frankly to have a player like Cortland Sutton, who again is should be the clear number one target earner. Again, touchdown regression baked in should just be the target earner and the main end zone target earner on that team. If Nick's who well, some smart people really like, you know, if he's even like half decent, if we could be talking about, you know, a monster hit here. Again, not saying the third overall player, but saying, you know, an eighth round pick that is a fourth round return as a third round return. And that's a great way to, you know, set your team up beautifully. And then you have to hit the big picks to put you over the top. I don't know what just happened. Again, just let the confusion reign. The player at the one spot on the 12-13 turn, back-to-back kickers. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not drafting a kicker, let alone two kickers, let alone two kickers back-to-back at a time where I could be getting guys that actually play foosball. Again, I don't know if this is auto pick. I don't know if this is boomer stuff, just galaxy brain to the 8D chess level. Maybe I'm stupid, right? I want to leave that back door open as also as well. I mean, and I don't know what's going on. So let's just keep stacking playing time. Let's keep stacking opportunities. Again, there's 500K on the line here. So no rest for the weary. I'm going to look to build that bench, man. Build the bench, build the bench, build the bench. Keeping an eye again, I'm going to keep an eye on quarterbacks. I'm going to keep an eye on like tight ends. I'm not going to stress. I'm, I'm considering the Taysom Hill thing now as we speak. If I go Hill, I know I'm shutting the door on tight ends. Let's look at quarterback just really quick. I mean, there's still Herbert, Cousins, Rogers, Mayfield. I'm not even thinking about that. I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking about, you know, Drake May or Bo Nix or like Justin Fields or something in case. Um, Russell Wilson twists an ankle between now and kickoff. You know, again, I, I don't quite understand the creation of roster issues. Don't do that. And that's a part of the draft strategy is avoiding that, right? That's why, again, I made the H chain pick where I normally wouldn't have done that. It's also why I made the Pitts pick. So again, if you get Ferguson or Njoku, I probably could have punted back on that. I don't want to say I have regrets, but that's somewhere I probably could have dropped back and, you know, to fill in. I don't know, Xavier Worthy or something like that, right? Big upside kind of play. All right, we're coming up again in a handful of picks. Again, I, I think we're doing really good. I'm about to just smash the Cam Akers button as fast as humanly possible. Because, again, you know, the we're not really gambling at this point on, on needing anything. We know Houston is set up to at least be a great offense. Yes, I'm worried about the injuries. 
But again, I don't have to start him. There's a chance. Akers is more explosive than Mixon and takes this job. And is right. I just you can see where I'm going. I I'm building for pathways to the victory, right? To the all the upside. Just give me the, the pathways to ceilings once I've built out all my starters. And I think again, Akers, right? If you're the explosive back on a team like the Texans like truly ascendant, right? The word, I'm going to keep using it. That's the positions we want to be in. And again, you know, if Akers goes down and you cut him and hopefully it was on our bench and that's, you know, that's that. We can taste some hills to float around there. Polk and Leggett still out there. The wide receivers, you know, drying up a touch to be expected. I'm looking for youth here because I'm looking for big pops, man. I, you know, Josh Downs. I don't really. I wasn't really looking to like stash, but he's a you know a target earner, and they could be prolific. We want exposure to Shane Steichen whenever we can. I'm like wondering how long, how far do I have to keep scrolling? There's so many players, you know, that don't produce in football overall, right? Again, uh, removing ADP for total points is just going to get you compilers at a certain point. All right, we're on deck. Come on. Oh, I love, we got to love Acres. Then after that, you know, it gets kind of hairy. All right, let's go. Cam Acres season, baby. Again, just building to upside with running backs. You know, a lot of the cutesy picks kind of gone. The Chiefs went and brought in P. Ryan. So, like, all the late Carson Steele kind of lost some shine. I have to decide if I think Poke and Leggett, Poke and or Leggett, right, kind of make it back. Oh, so, man, I like Greg Dorch to earn early targets. I like Rashad Beatman to earn early targets. Okay, so that's actually enough pass catchers. that I, Maybe I'm going to go the other route and – Prioritize Taysom Hill on my wrap here. Hopkinson and Dalton Schultz went with Jacoby Myers. So tight end starting to get stressed. Yeah, I'm looking at the at the at the Hill pick. Again, any running backs that really kind of stand out? The answer feels like a pretty definitive no. There still comes some sexy backups. You know, I think uh Tank Bigsby is a very clear. Backup. I think Justice Hill is a pretty clear backup. Those are guys, you know what? I should be checking these guys off, right? Draft, draft stuff 101, especially on these weird sites, right? You don't know when the, the names are going to pop back up again. Okay, we're on deck. Mike Williams just went, thanks, but no thanks. He's going to get worked into a role with the Jets. I'm just not really interested in that. You know, I want explosivity. I feel like that. Horses kind of left the barn already. That was to the guy with all the running backs. That's what he's going to rely on. Jacoby Myers and Mike Williams to save his season. Like, you can have that, brother. Then again, Harrison Butker. You want kickers? I don't want kickers. No thanks. We do want Taysom Hill and the possibility for him to be like the Saints RB2 or to maybe be like their QB2 and their wide receiver three all at the same time. Excuse me just a second. And we're back. So the one, right, the, the one slight question I had in the starting lineup, which again is Kyle Pitts, which some people are like, I have Kyle Pitts, I'm locked in all the way. I'm trying to be cautiously optimistic, right, not be irrationally exuberant. And just fortify the places we had to worry. Unfortunately, Jalen Wright's already gone, so I can't back up HM with that. But again, we went second round pick with HM. We need going to need him to be great. And if he's not great, I don't want to say we're sunk, but if he's not great without having been great at all, we're probably in trouble. I mean, that's what the game is, right? Not many people plan on winning without the second round pick. 
So there's nothing, you know, there's no shame in that. So again, we're looking really, really strong. Jalen Hurts as a QB. A-Chan, Zach Moss, Rico Dowdle, Bucky Irvin, Cam Akers. Devonta Smith, A.J. Brown, Chris Godwin, Brian Thomas, Cortland Sutton, Rashid Shahid, pretty strong. Kyle Pitts, Taysom Hill. Now we're going to need some pass catchers again there. I don't even know if you can go, if you could even bother anymore with this ADP stuff. So, again, I mentioned I like Polk. I mentioned I like um, Leggett. I mentioned Dorch. I mentioned Bateman already. Um, I like Jalen Tolbert. I think he has a chance, right, again, a pathway to get into that explosive Dallas offense as a legitimate contributor could mean a ton. Gosh, the last time we I played, I had Dwayne to do this part for me. And it's pretty serious scroll through this, you know, because, again, guys are listed by point totals. So, oh, my gosh, what's his name? <laughs> Somebody help me out. What's his name? We like um, – oh, my gosh. I can't – oh, my gosh. I can't believe I can't remember his name right now. I'm drawing a, a blank shame on me, everybody. I'm just trying to squirrel up my favorite kind of late picks and just make sure I get them on the queue. Oh, Brendan Rice for the charge. What I've been trying to attack – I've been trying to attack um, weakness. So Washington showed some weakness when they moved Dotson. So I like McCaffrey. Again, um, the Chargers might straight up might straight up stink. You know. So. Rice, who was undrafted free agent, played his way onto the team and like was a snap leader in the preseason. Again, I don't know what that means, but we're not expecting much from the Charger pass moments. They've got to do something. And even if you really like, you know, I mean, Palmer, you like Palmer and McConkey, I just think there's a pathway. Again, I'm not going to push up Rice to somewhere unreasonable, but I think he belongs on these lists. Excuse me, everybody. I'm sorry. Um, Let's see. Man, it gets really ugly. I know some people like Aguilar to fill in the three spot for Baltimore, but I think it might be Devontae's. Actually, maybe that'll be something we look at later on. Again, this is just like a, not say a mess, but you need to know your stuff. And I think, I mean, I feel pretty certain almost at this point, like edge in this room is determined by how well you know the player pool at the back. Because it's almost inevitable. It almost feels inevitable. You're going to see names pop that you go, wait, what? Wait, he was still available? How is that possible? You know, and, and I think that's that's like real. You know, everybody is looking at the, the um, list the way that it's set or whatever. Which is human nature and then so it's wrong from there. But again, you're you're really on your own. So Jalen Polk went. That was a name that we had queued up. That went Michael Wilson, a name that we had. Tank Bisbee, a name that went. So we're kind of in line with a lot of the people here. We love seeing you know those second and third QBs going. We love seeing those second and third tight ends going now because we're done with that stuff. So it's all about playing for upside, right, and hopefully just enough playing time to make it happen. There really aren't many many running backs I like at all. So I may actually prioritize the Justin Hill – Justice, excuse me, Justice Hill pick because there are so few other people that I like. I mean, I like Dylan Law, but he's got to go a lot later. Jets defense went, Wandale Robinson. I mean, we're getting to players that I couldn't care less if we're getting drafted. Like, they get drafted, and I'm kind of fist pumping. But it's starting to get pretty empty as far as the cupboards go. I'm noticing that 
I have a slight buildup of wide receivers that people have kind of forgotten about. Okay, those that's what you're gonna get in a league like this. Um last year's trash or rookies or injured guys. Because if you're searching by points, you didn't get nothing from Jalen Tolbert. But he's impressing in camp. Cooks already had a sl- small injury. Now, granted, Lamb is back, but there's plenty of room for opportunity in Dallas. Plenty of room. So, again, you could see Tolbert playing his way into a tremendous role by, by Halloween. You know, that's what we're, And that's what I'm looking for, that my starters kind of get me enough leeway to let the potential on the bench mature, right? And hopefully some of that maturation turns into studs. And that's kind of it to replace the injuries or whatever the cases or the misses that we had. Not that I made any mistakes in this draft. Room. Again, feeling very strong about this. Love this team. Love this team. And, you know, if Brian Thomas for the Jaguars comes out in a studly man, could be great. I and, mean, again, I don't even need him to if Shahid is good on the fast track in New Orleans. Or, you know, Taysom Hill is that versatile collector of fantasy points. He could be a perfect flex, too. Hopefully, I don't need him to replace Pitts, right? Then you're probably in trouble. Justice Hill went rats, drat. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, like, I don't even know all the players I mentioned. I didn't really have any other, any other runners here. CEH, Jamal Williams. I like Roshan Johnson, but he is the third. Man, Shipley, maybe, oh, you know what? We have to go Dalvin Cook because we went, because we went Dowdle. Yeah, that one feels pretty, pretty clear to me. Not that there's much else to choose from anyway, but again, just in case we're looking back, I'm like, oh my God, Dalvin Cook is healthy. He's the Cowboys, you know, RB1. Roshan Johnson went. So, like, all right, my guys were starting to go anyway. So, we're going to go Cook. Again, just to spell Dowdle. And, you know, maybe we have the winning answer for Dallas. Again, I don't have a ton of uh, confidence, right? I'm not going to go and tell you how I'm a Jets fan and watch Cook just be the worst, the worst ball carrier, carrier I can remember in a decade. Xavier Leggett went, and I wonder if I should have put a little more thought and not been so aggressive, right? These guys are starting to take their pass catchers now. Maybe I could have let it slide. I didn't want to lose on Cook because I, I feel like between Dowell and Cook, again, you know, where's Zeke at? Zeke feels like maybe just the short line, goal line kind of guy, which has value on a great team like Dallas. But we're looking for base work. We're looking for pass catching work. We're looking for two-minute offense stuff. And also, we're looking for a breakout play. I don't think you're going to get a breakout from Zeke at this point in his career. So I probably could have passed for Leggett if that was even the guy I wanted. Now we have to choose. Dorch, but that feels crowded because I do like Wilson, but he's been a standout. McCaffrey, Tolbert. Hmm. You know, my gut actually is saying McCaffrey. And it's just because I think all the other guys are a third wheel. And after moving dots in, you know, I actually thought that might have been to make room for. McCaffrey reports are strong to start. I think they said they, they settled down a bit. Hmm. And you know, if I'm going to use that logic, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with Rashad beat. They can just kind of, you know, lean into injury stuff that does scare me. I'm not going to lie. Maybe this is the year. I don't know. And that's like the worst analysis there is. But if we are talking about stepping on the field as a starter with the potential to earn targets, Bateman's a starter. Bateman's a two there. You know, we've all kind of just gotten sick of it because he just doesn't play enough. 
two years ago when he played, we got some love, but he's healthy right now. They've been holding him out. So he should be in line for snaps. Again, I'm not starting Rashad Bateman in week one anywhere. You know, I'm not going over any prop bets here. But I think if we're listing players in, you know, late in round 15, that again could start right off the bat and surprise, have talent, or attach to good offensive contextual environments, I think Bateman checks those boxes. I probably have the guys that we're going to be drafting in the queue already. I wish I had I wish I had someone to kind of fill up some airtime so I could go scan into this wide receiver list is just ridiculous. I guess at this point I could I can scan by stats just the different ones. I mean people like Shipley, he gets a little bit of love. Mentioned Jamal Williams, he gets a little bit of love. If this is really kind of ugly. I've had Dylan Lobb. I read like one report on him, and all of a sudden I like pushed him up to the top of my ranks here. I think one beat report, one beat reporter somewhere on earth mentioned he could challenge for like a legit role there. And I was like, okay, good enough for me. <laughs> sold and sold. And it is ugly, ugly, man. You can't even search by team. This is so brutal for me right now. I'm dying right now. I'm dying right now. Um, let's see. And it's just there's nobody left. You know, these the only players left just didn't play or were dead, or you're gonna have to kind of hold on to them. Michael Carter, Josh Kelly, DeMarcado, just guys that we're not interested in at all. Cordero Paris, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ian. I just can't do it, brother. I can't do it, bro. If me and you draft together, we could draft them in the last round. Oh, uh, like do I take the Deuce Vaughn and and look to complete the trifecta? I know. Uh, LJ Lawrence Jackson at Rotor World, really great analyst, cool dude, was talking about he liked Vaughn as maybe being the best runner they had. Now, again, I guess at this point in the draft, that's how you get there, but yikes. I don't know what to make of any of this stuff. Miles Sanders, I know, what's his name? Dwayne was talking about Sanders, maybe like being a guy in Carolina. Could be. Again, I don't want to – we're at the point I'm not I'm not yucking anybody's yum right now because I have no idea what's going to happen with any of this stuff. I'm just looking for any kind of familiar name. Again, I know I was drafting Damian Pierce. It just doesn't seem like that's happening. The scheme doesn't seem to fit. And, man, enough, like, bad reports and yeah, eventually stop buying last year's trash. Sorry about the motorcycle race going on outside of my window, apparently. Man, there is nothing here. These cupboards are really empty. So, okay, I think I would and should prioritize the one runner I have, which is Lob. Jeez, I need help, man. Everybody needs somebody sometimes. Man. Jeez Louise. Yeah, get your running back. This is what happens when you're, you know, when you have those rooms where running backs were getting pushed up early from the jump. By the time you get to the back, it's just, it's not even like tenable. You know, I don't even know what to make. This is just undraftable levels of talent here. Yeah, so we have like the two or three guys I would even consider. Like rostering, man, I may even draft the defense at this point. You know, I'm not going to take guys that are not making teams. Yikes. Really, really rough. Really rough. I mean, I'm not finding a single name. So, you know, I wish I knew. I think I can't really leave you people to go BS on my own. I had been drafting Trey Sermon as the backup. In Indy, right behind JT, there really wasn't much going. They were saying how great he looked in training camp, and of course, he got hurt. This is Trey Sermon. I mean, he's back at practice, so he's that's definitely a guy that we like. Again, there's just nothing doing here. A lot of the pass catchers I mentioned didn't go. Chandler McMillan, who I mentioned earlier on, I forgot about him. And he slipped, again, maybe a, a better consideration, like more thorough consideration. I probably would have taken him over Bateman. 
just as like a half a handcuff to Godwin. But again, I really like Bateman. I think Bateman has a better pathway to want a ceiling case because, again, he's on the field, attached to Lamar Jackson with at least a plan for playing time. But I can't tell you. I'd be lying if I said I'm not, not kicking myself at least a little bit. I see a couple of quarterbacks going. So just do, you know, just kind of check. Just kind of check who's left. I mean, you could still get Daniel Jones, Derek Carr, Sam Donald, Bryce Young, Bo Nix. I'm like not interested yet. Drake May, Justin Fields. So those are all guys that I would be fine with as like a kind of throwaway pick. So I'm not I'm not grabbing a second QB right now. That's not the plan. And if there's a few of those guys left towards the very, very end, I may just pass on it altogether, like I had mentioned. I think I underestimated how just how shallow the talent pool would be. We're now 95 minutes into the solo stream, the solo streams. Hey, man, at this point, if you made it this far, we might as well be friends. <laughs> hey, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> Tag me. Let my bosses know what kind of a job I'm doing. I'll retweet you and make your internet famous for about two and a half seconds. We've hit the point of the draft, but there are kickers who I don't, never heard of that are going. But in my defense, I've never heard of any of them before. If you're not making news, I don't know who you are. Defense is starting to go, again, not really interested. I'll stream defenses. To me, they're, if kickoff was tomorrow, it'd be a different story. We still have a week. Craziness can still ensue. So, like, if someone gets hurt, oh, Dylan Lobb. Can you get sniped at this point of a draft? If you can get sniped at this point of a draft, we did just get sniped because Dylan Lobb went right in front of us. So that leaves only Trey Sermon as the last like running back even on the queue. So we'll go with Sermon. Quick quick kind of bang, bang. I was hoping for Lobb, but again, that's okay. I think Lobb is the third fiddle, right? Zamir White, Alexander Madison, and that's probably Lobb, though. The way the Zamir White narrative has been going, that stock is kind of tanking right now. Again, if Sermon goes – if Sermon is healthy, secures the number two role, he's a guy without that little injury would be going, you know, five rounds earlier, just with the other clear backups. Colts actually went so far as to cut Evan Hole. I think they re-signed him to the practice squad. But to me, that roster move was a vote of confidence in Sermon. And, you know, coaches and – Coordinators do nothing but lie. Like it's not do they it's not they don't tell the truth ever. They they lie just habitually, perpetual falsehoods, you know, falsehoods coming up. But one place they can't lie is when they show you, you know, the roster card, right? The lineup card and playing time is flipping over the cards. So of course, as we as I try and drag my carcass to the last, you know, three rounds of this, I'm like woozy. I'm like woozy here trying to uh, scan through the doldrums of the player pool while I try and stay entertaining without more than two and a half seconds of dead air as I try and construct a team worthy of a half a million dollars. Gosh, I wonder how how, how will this stream be looked back upon? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you know I'm not asked if I don't get asked back. <laughs> well, who knows, man? I've been I've been called entertaining before. So, again, a couple things we learned, right? You know, um, be brave. But also, if you're anticipating running backs early, don't be afraid to pay a big premium for one because there will be wide receivers that all the best ball bros and all the D-gens like us are hip to later on. You know, your Adunze goes late. Even, like, Sutton goes late. Shahid, Addison, you know, guys that really might pop off Keon Coleman that could really pop off that are just going late. Even a guy like Xavier Worthy, who's going in like the you know fourth round in best ball, as goes in the eighth round in regular human drafts, or a guy like you know um, Malik Neighbors. I know early regardless, but he's going in the front end of the second, opposed to the back end of the third, and then some home leagues it's like fourth, fifth. I tend to think those are the deals. It's the lesser known, like analytically driven wide receiver plays that all the sharps are going to be on that the squares kind of miss that will be there as your cushion. 
So we're getting ready to go again. McCaffrey, Tolbert, Brandon Rice, you know. I think. I know like, the commanders brought in Zacchaeus, right? A lot of me, Zacchaeus, but with the move, I tend to think they wouldn't have made the move unless they really liked McCaffrey. I think we know what we got from Z Zacchaeus. They wouldn't have moved Dotson, who's like real outside type. Dorch is the highest up. I mean, man, McCaffrey is just is he, I don't I can't even find this guy in this list. Oh, because he's a rookie, so he's not gonna be on the point list, right? Like I don't even know where are the rookies. Maybe they're at the very bottom. Jahan Dotson goes, not interested. Looking at Dorch, I think if we pass on Dorch, he's gonna be gone. We only have three picks left, and I want to leave a door open for a quarterback. So I'm thinking, McCa I'm thinking McCaffrey here. Just for the uncertainty, again, I like know so little about these guys. I don't. I, I, I try not to pretend. You know, I try not to pretend to be something that I'm not. Stay in my lane. Um, 71 catches, 992 last year at 13 scores. A lot of touchdowns. Not that those are sticky, but all right, let's go McCaffrey. All right, so with toss him on the pile. Just looking for pop. That's pretty much it. You know, at this point, I'm just we're just kind of stabbing at you know guys that could be the connection we're looking for. You know, anytime you change a quarterback. Of course, you run the risk of upsetting the entire apple cart. But at the same token, there's a chance to front run the establishment of a wide receiver one connection. I don't know what to expect in Washington. Yes, obviously, we think F1 McLaurin is like the dude, obviously. But where's it going to go after that? I don't know. So if it becomes McCaffrey, right, you're glad you have him. And if he goes out and he's the third or fourth fiddle, boom, you caught him. Easy, easiest cut there is. Easiest cut there is. But I just prefer that than, I don't know, guys that I just think might stink, you know. Or maybe players we know what we're going to get from or ones that are hurt. You know, I'm looking, I'm looking at like Mike Williams where I worry about Williams – with a healthy preseason. Now, granted, if he was like glowing reports, maybe it'd be different, but it's been the opposite of that and banged up. And now they're telling you that he's on a slow track and they're gonna like ease him in. I don't want that. I don't want that. That's a those are the those again. I mentioned creating tough decisions. I think that's what you're doing. Because you're gonna keep telling yourself, oh, is he is he getting healthier? Is he gonna be getting more of a workload? Right? Am I just waiting for week like six, seven, eight? where you're making it harder for yourself down the line, where I want to make it as easy and obvious for myself as possible. Did this pick pop off? No. Goodbye. You know, when you drafting scoops of vanilla ice cream, eventually they're all going to start looking the same. And again, that, that's the issue. I don't want to create hard decisions. I don't want to have to pull my hair out trying to stream and digging into spreadsheets to try and figure out which I think is the better projection by a tenth of a point and like, those are just all the things that get you in trouble. So, again, two picks left to play for some upside. I've got Dorch, Tolbert, Brandon Rice. I like both of those guys. I guess that was three names. And then quarterback, man, Daniel Jones, Sam Darnold, Bo Nix. Justin Fields, Drake May. I know May. I guess May is a is a is a silly pick. Redraft. Sorry, I best bold you. But Fields might not be. Again, Fields very Justin Fields very easy cut, very easy cut. 
Steelers named Russell Wilson the starter. Why would you take Justin Fields in case Russell Wilson twists his ankle, you know, shooting a subway commercial? You have a top five projected QB, you know, regardless, top seven minimum. Justin Fields, unlike many players in the league, right? Forget just quarterbacks, can go for 150 and two. Now, I know that would be a tough decision, but I think you just want the coveted piece. I mean, other than that, I don't even know. I don't even know if I'm going to take a QB. I think you just, I think it's maybe it's silly. Maybe it's worth like looking at some defenses. You know what? Um, Dwayne and I, I was talking about the Bears, how great the Bears were down the stretch. Maybe I'll consider drafting the Bears and just adding a kicker. Right? Defense is a little more to it than kicking, which is com- completely stupid if you ask me. Right? You can just stream dome kickers or stream like weather guys or whatever. Yeah, right now I think that's the plan because there's just so little that I'm going to queue up the Bears my 20th. The 20th pick. All right, we'll be out of here soon enough. We're closing in on two hours of the Johnny show. Uh, like the video, right? And subscribe and stuff like that. Check out rtsports.com. Hit them up. Really cool site. Really easy to use. And tremendous, you know, payout, man. 500000 is, you know, tremendous payout for one of these teams. I love that. Playing for it all. Leave a comment. Again, let everyone know how you're doing, how I'm doing, how you're doing, how we're doing, how you're doing. And we'll go from there. You know, hopefully um, this is just the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Ian, I know, is away for the weekend. I'm going to bother him next week and try and get one in with him. I'll hit Dwayne up and ask him the same. And maybe we can bang out a few more of these. If not, I don't know how many. I don't know how many of these I can handle on my own. It's a it's a huge lift. It's a huge lift. Although I guess it'll get easier having been familiarized with the player pool a little bit and like the draft flow and all that stuff. But man, I am so used to best balling right now. Fast draft best balls where you're like in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out so quick that this two hours I'm just like, oh my gosh. Oh my God. Although I did like being able to sit and actually think about some of the picks. You know, again, maybe I should have went with McMillan over Bateman, but Bateman does have top side. Again, and I was trying to check the box of who could come out and pop off the bat. I think you have to wait for McMillan. I think McMillan is an injury away. I don't think the Buccaneers and Baker Mayfield are quite ready to support three fantasy assets just yet. So hopefully I made the right decision. If not, my McMillan best ball bags will be jingling, jing, jing, jingling. All right, so we're up again, second to last pick for us. Man, as much as I like Rice, and I really do like I think I want to go Rice. I was going to say Dorch because he gets all the – you know, all the off-season love that he's just, man, this, oh, you shouldn't be agonizing a 19th round pick like this. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to go, I'm going Rice. You know, the thinking is just that even if we like more from the Cardinals than we do from the Chargers, the, the Cardinals room is so, is just, it's so stuffed, the Chargers room, with talent and opportunity that even if Dorch is good, you got to think there's going to be times where he's just out, right? You're on the outside looking at Connor's going to get the rock. McBride's going to get the rock. Harrison's Marvin Harrison Jr., I mean, is going to get the rock. So you can see where that goes, where that goes south. I, mean, I think I'm glad with the Rice pick in. Very easy cut. This is a QJ fade. And what, like a chalk fade? I don't feel great about any of the – Pass catching assets, Lad, Lad McConkey included. Again, even if he's good, we need a few guys to be good to get left out in the cold in this one. So we're going to go with the Bears to wrap this one up, and that will do it from yours truly at John Legaza. Make sure to follow me and make sure that you're checking out all of the wonderful stuff going on at MB Fantasy Life. <laughs> 
I am about to fall on my face. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, again, if you had any you know, questions, comments, we'll tweet this stuff. You come at me. Again, I'm open to all scrutiny. Hopefully I did a good job explaining all the picks and why I went in different directions that I did while pointing out other draft strategies, pockets, and stuff like that. I think we did a pretty good job for a single person on the fly. So that'll do it. Make sure to rate, re review, and subscribe. Check out all the MBE Fantasy Life, like I said, and please subscribe to the Betting Life newsletter. Again, if you hit me up on Twitter, follow me at John Legeza. J O H N L A G H E Z Z A. That'll stream on all the work and get you all the free goodies. So, from yours truly, enjoy the rest of your weekend along with everyone, all the lovely ladies and gentlemen at MB Fantasy Life. Remember to check out real sports and rtsports.com. Check out the drafts over there. And maybe I'll catch you in the next room, right?